Hi there, welcome to today's video where I want to share with you some interesting results that we've learned from an experiment that we've been running here for the last few months where we've been growing uh, using the substrate as our spawn and uh, after about 12 weeks or so of running this experiment with a few different batches we've got some really interesting results that I want to share with you. Let's get stuck in. So if you follow us here on the Grow Cycle channel, you may have seen a video we put out um, about, around about three months ago talking about using mushroom substrate as spawn. And this is a question we've often got from people both on our courses and you know just on YouTube or on, on our website. Uh, you know, People basically wondering why is it you need to use a fresh batch of spawn each time? Can't you just kind of reuse a little bit of the substrate from one batch for the next? You know, in the same way that you might do with sourdough culture or kefir grains or kombucha. And it's a really good question. Um, so we thought that we'd, you know, sort of address that with a practical experiment, which we've been running now for around about 12 weeks. And in that time, we've basically done five rounds of, of this process of sort of taking a little bit of substrate from one batch um, and using that as the spawn for the next batch. And we wanted to show you basically what happens if you go through this process, because obviously people experiment with this in a bid to try and reduce their spawn cost and it does actually work you can use substrate uh, as the spawn to make the next batch reasonably successfully at least with uh, aggressive mushrooms like oyster mushrooms and with pasteurized substrate so um, as you'll see in the results i'll show you in just a second this does work you can produce mushrooms like this but as you do it time and time again you start to accumulate um, some harmful effects which uh, we'll show you. So there's really three main things uh, that we saw beginning to develop over time which you know, may, in my opinion means that it's not worthwhile as a practice to do this uh, on an ongoing basis. So I'm going to go and jump behind the computer now and just share with you the three main lessons that we learned from this experiment. Let's go. Alright so first up then the good side. The practice of using substrate as spawn does work up to a point. So you can see in these images on the screen here at the moment these are some of the first batches that we did where we took a bit of the substrate from a column and we added it to another batch as the spawn and you can see really nice strong growth um, no signs of contamination we got full colonization in all the columns that we inoculated like this uh, and they grew through to completion where we were then able to harvest uh, some nice looking mushrooms off of the column that you can see here and this just goes to show that this practice does work and so when people tell you you need to use grain spawn or fresh batch of spawn every time in order for it to work that's not entirely true it does work to do it like this now having said that there's a few things that we found as we continue to run these trials over a period of time and we continue to reuse you know one column from each batch as spawn for the next batch and i'm going to break it down for you now into these three main results that we uh, began to see. First up then is you see that the mycelium does age over time and it does become slower to colonize the substrate. So whereas the first time that we did this we saw nice bright white mycelium running quickly across the substrate, by the time we got to the th third, fourth and especially the fifth round we began to see the mycelium slowing right down and it began to show signs of aging. We saw sort of brown and yellowing of the mycelium, which is a sign that it's aging or that it's fighting some kind of infection. So in terms of it slowing down, what we were seeing previously in the first one or two rounds was that it was colonizing as we would normally see with grain spawn in about 12 to 14 days. And later on, when we got to batch four, uh, this was now taking about 18 or 19 days. So it was taking a good few days extra to reach full colonization. And as you can see in these images here that, you know, the mycelium didn't look as strong and it didn't look as happy. We're seeing increasing uh, areas where, which look a bit blotchy where the mycelium hasn't fully colonized. This is a sign that it's probably fighting some kind of infection in that space. And you also see increasing areas of kind of browny, yellowy metabolites, which again is a sign that the mycelium is fighting off infection. So both of these things together just go to show that the mycelium is aging over time. It's becoming less vigorous and it's becoming more susceptible to uh, infections from other organisms trying to grow on the same substrate. The second big result really, and this is a, a big one, especially if you're looking to grow on an ongoing basis, that you get a much lower yield when you use substrate as the spawn versus the traditional uh, way of using grain spawn. And just to highlight just how big a change you see in the yield, have a look at this graph. So what you can see here on the graph is the 
average yield in mushrooms as a percentage of the substrate. So if you've got 10 kilos of substrate, a uh, typical yield you would normally get with grain spawn is around about 25% of that substrate as mushrooms. So you'd normally look to harvest around about two and a half kilograms of mushrooms for every 10 kilos of substrate. So that's the uh, one that you can see on the right here on this chart, the grain spawn, that's kind of a, an average yield and you can think of that as a bit of a benchmark for the, the normal way of growing mushrooms. The other two columns you can see then, substrate spawn A, that is where we've taken substrate from a column that has just gone through the incubation process for two weeks, so it hasn't fruited any mushrooms yet, we're taking it kind of at the point where it reaches full colonization and then just transferring uh, part of that onto another five uh, bags so we've kind of used it at a 20% inoculation rate and we've just expanded it onto another batch and then substrate spawn B that is from a column of substrate that has been through the incubation process and through the fruiting process so it's produced two crops of mushrooms and then we take a piece of that substrate and use that to make the next batch now you can see there's a slight difference in yield so substrate from from batch A um, had, did produce a higher yield than that from, from batch B uh, and that kind of makes sense. You'd expect that columns of substrate that have gone through additional process of fruiting, they've expended additional energy um, and they're older as well. You know, the, the mycelium inside that column is, has aged further by that point. So you'd expect to see lower yields when you're using that as your spawn. But overall you can see that the yield we're looking um, with substrate from batch A is around about 11%, is less than half of the yield that you get when you use grain spawn, where you've got fresh, vigorous uh, growth from the grain spawn, but also the grain spawn adds additional uh, nitrogen and other nutrients to the substrate. So you're, in effect, you know, you can think of uh, grain spawn as, as a type of supplement to the substrate. Um, if you're interested to learn a bit more about substrate in general and supplementation, then uh, we have got another video that covers uh, substrate options in a lot more detail, so go and check that out. Um, but you can see here, you know, as an overall result that using substrate as spawn, although it does produce nice mushrooms, it does produce them at a much lower yield. And then result number three then was that we began to see the development of mushroom mites as a pest starting to grow in and on the substrate and on the mushrooms themselves. And to show you what this looks like, check out the video that you can see here. You can see these tiny little creatures crawling around, running around on the base of the mushrooms. And this is something we began to notice in uh, batch four, in, the, in round four of continuing to expand the substrate onto a new uh, batch. By the time we got to round four, we noticed these little mites starting to crawl around at the base of the mushrooms um, and this is obviously a massive problem, not least because, you know, you can't sell mushrooms that have got mites running around them. Nobody's interested in eating them in that way. But also, as with most of these things, populations grow very, very quickly once they've become established. And on top of that, you've got the prospect of spreading uh, mites around your fruiting room to um, other bags in there other substrate in there and also further back into your production line you can easily get them transferred into the incubation room and so before you know it you can have a major problem with uh, mites. Now the question is why did mites begin to develop after four rounds of reusing the substrate as spawn? Uh, well it's hard to say for sure but I think what's most likely is that if you think about every time you you take a bit of substrate and you uh, use it as spawn, you, you're taking a, an aged piece of substrate there um, which may have in it very small number of mites that maybe made it through the pasteurization process. And, and when you then expand that up again and you take it onto an, a next round uh, of substrate and then again and again and again, you're just expanding the period of time in which that straw is able to uh, be transferred and moved on to the next uh, batch of substrate and in that time the population of mites have a chance to multiply each time over and over again so what you're doing by transferring substrate and using it as spawn is you're transferring anything else that may be in that substrate as a pest that you you know you can't see necessarily uh, you're giving it a chance to develop further in each round of expansion 
Now, normally you won't see a problem with that if you're using grain spawn because you know your substrate, even if you get a small number of, of eggs in, in the straw that make it through the pasteurization, you don't really get to see that create a big problem because even if some of those eggs then go on to develop, they're not having long enough to stay in that substrate and multiply to the point where it, it becomes a problem and you even notice it. So generally, we never ever see mushroom mites in our substrate when using grain spawn. And we could see it very clearly in this case. We were only seeing mites on the substrate that had come from uh, substrate spawn. We didn't see it in bags made the same week that were made with grain spawn. So it was clearly a result of using the substrate as the spawn. Those are the three main things we found and I'm just going to briefly show you kind of the three conclusions off the back of this uh, that I have come to with, with running this experiment then. So the first one is that I wouldn't recommend using substrate as, as spawn more than once. So whereas when we saw the first one or two expansions of using the substrate as, as the spawn, we saw really strong healthy growth. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that more than one time. I think you open the door to uh, more problems the more times that you use the same batch again and again. So that's the first conclusion. The second one is that I think doing this can work for low cost, low tech, hobby mushroom growing. For example, if you've you know got one batch of substrate on the go and you just want to try and make that go a little bit further, I think it can work on a small scale to do it like this and it's certainly one way of reducing the, the spawn costs. But the third conclusion I have really is that I wouldn't recommend doing this for either commercial mushroom production or ongoing mushroom production. Uh, for a start, the low, the low yields that you receive you know, really means it's not worth the effort of creating each batch of substrate. It doesn't make best use of your space or materials. All of your inputs are the same, but the output is less than half of what you would get had you used grain spawn. And then the other thing, of course, is that you really just open up the door. It's a very high risk of introducing a major pest problem in your whole operation uh, that can then spread and become really hard to eliminate. So by all means, play around with this on a small scale, but I really wouldn't recommend going ahead and doing it as an ongoing thing. If you'd like to learn more about low-tech mushroom farming, check out the link in the description below where we have a free ebook if you would like to learn more about how to set up a low-tech mushroom farm. Thanks a lot for watching for the day. Do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and we'll see you again soon.